And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is Wednesday, hump day, November the 2nd. And of course, great to be here as always and talk a little country music, a little sports, a little bit of everything here just uh, on a hump day as we get ready for the weekend, the first full week of November here. 2022 presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out at uh, bangtail.com where you can download the Easy Liquor app and get that bottle sent directly to your door, no doubt. Well, pleased to be joined today by a legend in country music. She sold over 12 million records in her lifetime and the youngest member of the Grand Ole Opry, the great Lori Morgan here on the Backstage Pass. Lori, how you doing? Oh, I'm great. How are you? It's been a good day, no doubt. It's been busy, but then things kind of got calmer waters, and I love that view uh, behind you as you guys just got oh, into... Uh, beautiful? <laughs> it's beautiful there into Mississippi. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> right on the it. Gulf. It's just beautiful. I'm just so happy to be here, and um, we're having a... Uh, I've, I've had a little throat problem the last mm -hmm. few weeks and taking a little time off and um came down here with my sisters and my brother to just uh kind of get back in touch with reality if you know what i mean <laughs> a little bit we all need that these days to yeah. get back in touch with reality too hey tell me about this it's been busy too obviously over the last few weeks uh, the country music hall of fame has come calling and uh two of the biggest names uh, gigantic names in in music history Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, I'm glad he was alive to see that he got in uh, before he passed. Uh, God rest his soul. And, of course, the legend, a guy you know very well in, in Keith Whitley. What was that like to finally kind of hear that bell ring, Lori, to get those two big names in the Country Music Hall of Fame? Uh, I just, you know, it's it's so cliche to say. I mean, what we all felt, my, my son and my daughter and myself. And, I mean, it just it just kept resonating. It was just like, you know, Keith Whitley, Keith Whitley. And I'm like, he, he couldn't, he wouldn't even be able to believe that that happened. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we've worked, so many of us have worked so hard for so long to get Keith recognized in the country music hall of fame. And, uh, you know, the fans wanted him in there and we wanted him in there and his fellow peers wanted him in there. And, um, it just sent chills. I mean, it, you know, I mean, I was, I was like freezing um, mm -hmm. when they announced his name. Of course, by the time I got up on stage, I was sweating like a pig. Um, Cause I was like, I didn't even, I, I couldn't even prepare anything to say. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's hard to speak for someone else. And so, you know, I kept thinking, you know, what, who would Keith think and what would he say? And of course he was, he was so um, he was such a great speaker anyway, but, um, you know, I just hope, you know, we did him justice and, um, made him proud because he sure, he sure made us proud that night. And we walked in there and, you know, they already had his plaque up on the wall next to Joe Galani. And mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, Joe Galani is, uh, was the head of RCA records that signed Keith. Mm -hmm. uh, to RCA. And, uh, so they were both inducted in, in the same night, um, Jerry Lee and Keith and Joe Galani. So it was, uh, it was incredible. It was a great night. My whole family was there and, um, you know, it was just incredible. You know, you've been staying busy, no doubt with the, the live shows coming back and, and it definitely, I bet it feels pretty good to get back out there on stage in front of the live crowds. And there's a big show coming up next week, Friday, November 11th in Baton Rouge there at the LaBerge Casino Hotel Resort there too. I know exciting to get down here and play a little bit of the Gulf Coast and, and just see fans come back out, flock, grab some beers and just chill out at concerts, right? Oh, I'm just sorry that it ain't crawfish season. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. <laughs> I can eat my weight in crawfish, and uh, of course, I love it down, uh, you know, on the coast and and down here, and uh, love playing down. You know, th there's nothing like this down here, mm -hmm. and um, you know, my husband and I just moved back to Tennessee from Florida, and now we've decided next year we're moving back. So um, <laughs> we miss the beach. <laughs> you know, ever since I've been to Tennessee, moved back to Tennessee, I've been sick. I've been really? sick. Both, you know, all the tree allergies and the moss and it was just terrible and mm -hmm. i said you know i didn't have any of this stuff with the ocean breeze and the salt air and stuff so but i am excited about being down in biloxi and and baton rouge and mm -hmm. we've gone to a bunch of different places down there so i want to ask you about uh, a great guy in, in the industry right now making a name for himself uh, of course uh, jesse keith whitley out there too I, I love the fact that 
he can follow in the footsteps of the family heritage too. Talk about just his success, Lori, and how proud you are of him. Well, I am very proud of him. And, you know, Jesse is uh, Jesse. is Jesse. And as Pam Tillisar says, <laughs> where there's smoke, there's Jesse. And <laughs> Jesse's a, he's, he's a little outlaw. He's not, um, you know, people... People always say, well, uh, sing your daddy's song. And he does. He does sing mm -hmm. his dad's songs. Uh, but they want him, you know, they, they kind of expect him to sound just like Keith. And that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, he's got a lot of outlaw in him. And he's got a lot of outlaw friends. And he's making his own kind of music. And um, he's got great friends, I might add, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, his his whole genre, uh, the, the rappers and the outlaws and the you know, all, they, they are so supportive of me. They come to my shows. Um, and Jesse, uh, matter of fact, he went, he's going in the studio tonight and recording, I think, with, um, golly, can't remember, uh, 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 Shooter Jennings. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I'm not Shooter Jennings. Um, help me. Help uh, me. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait, Jennings? Or not Way. Not way. way. Way's one of his great friends. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name right now too. You're talking about too. Oh my Stephanie. gosh, he's one of he's one of my good friends. And Jesse went as him for Halloween, and his wife went as his wife for Halloween. <laughs> uh, I love it. Golly, what is what is wrong with me? If somebody knows the comment box, they can leave a comment box here, and, and I I'll definitely get to it here. I, I mean, I'm I'm brain dead, <laughs> brain dead. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's he's got his own really cool circle of friends and he's mm -hmm. uh making his own kind of music writing his own kind of songs mm -hmm. producing his own records and you know he's he's doing it his way yeah and, uh, and that's what i told him i said jesse you know you got to find your way just like your daddy had to find his way started off in bluegrass and decided that wasn't it and i had to do things my way mm -hmm. and um when you do things your way, people to kind of take notice, you know, you don't be a follower. You try and be a leader and a creator. And uh, that's what he's doing. He's great. No doubt. Hey, I want to talk about some of those great 90s struggle. songs. Uh, what's... Struggle. Struggle Jennings. Struggle. Struggle Jennings. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why that name escaped me too. Struggle Jennings. <laughs> oh, he'd kill me if he, if he knows about that. <laughs> Hey, the great iconic songs. I was just listening to uh, one of our stations in Houston today, 97.1, The Legends. I mean, playing just great stuff out there. And I mean, these songs uh, stick with me and have for a long time, even back with the old vinyl records. But, you know, it's just good to see, I think, the old country starting to to come back with a number of female and male artists today in, in the industry. But I'm sure there's not a day goes by when you can look at things like Five Minutes and What Part of No and Except for Monday and just remember how much of an impact those songs had in your career in old country music, right? Uh, you know, it, it didn't, it doesn't hit you till later in life. And, um, you know, I, I never knew that when I recorded those songs that they would be, uh, such an impact on my career. I mean, I, how, how do you know? And especially when you're young, you just don't know. So I, I got very lucky, very lucky recording those songs and, uh, you know, kind of setting, a a, a, a way for some of the other females and, um, it's it's been it's been really a fun ride for me and to to hear people say well you're you know a trendsetter and what you sing and and talk about and and I, it's hard for me to believe I am and it's definitely um, you know my kids are like what my mom she's a trendsetter you know <laughs> but <laughs> excuse me one minute go ahead <clears throat> I've had um, like I said I've had bronchitis and laryngitis mm -hmm. and. So, um, but yeah, it's great to see some of these and, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to produce a young lady. Her name's Morgan Cheyenne Ooh. and, uh, we're going to produce her in December and she's as country as cornbread. <laughs> and, uh, she, she reminds me of a young, she's dark hair. So mm -hmm. which kind of makes her Loretta Linish, but she reminds me of a young Dolly Parton. She Ooh. just writes and sings so good and perfect. And she plays in my band right now, but I stole her from Texas <laughs> And uh, and she's going to be a star. She will be a star. I love that. Hey, also, it's great to have some other projects on the side. We all got our hands pretty much in a cookie jar on a lot of things. I know there's the beginning stages of uh, a new book about life, and the focus will be in you know women in in music and 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 people you've admired as well as uh, you know just what it's been like to be a female in, in the the country music industry over the years. Tell us what you can about this project. 
Well, <laughs> it's it's going to be in depth. Um, mm -hmm. It's it, um, and I'm not calling it a tell-all book. It's not. I mean, there's a lot of things I can't tell. People are still walking around, you know. And uh, but there's a lot of things that need to be told because it's hard. It was hard for me back when I started getting into the country music industry uh, as a business person. I mean, it, back then we were taken advantage of very much so. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, that are responsible for uh, my success and a lot of people that were responsible for holding me back. And, um, you know, just, you know, just not being treated equal. Uh, when when I was first getting into the business, um, even, even though I might have the number one song, I was still going to open for a male singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> now I pray for opening spots so I can get my house slippers on and get to bed. But <laughs> um, no, it's just ch it's the book is about a lot of uh, friendships. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, a lot of jealousy. It's about um, struggles being um, a mom on the road and away from your children and being the only breadwinner and and staying married. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a tough business. This is a t this is a tough, a tough business. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just pray every day that I can keep holding on to you know, the dates we're, we're blessed with working and mm -hmm. working on a new album right now that's getting ready to come out. And um, this book, this book has had my, my brain so preoccupied and the album, but I had to put the album on hold because I got bronchitis and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So anyway, got a lot going on. You do. And, and uh, speaking of that, the, the new album, The Touch is There, uh, talk about working. I know Richard Landis is on this project as a producer. I mean, what a name to have on your new record. Yeah, I'm very blessed. And uh, Richard's been sick as well. So we mm -hmm. both, uh, we, uh, we've we got the whole album done, except my vocals. Mm -hmm. um, Richard was able to, to get well enough to produce the album. And uh, um, we just got a couple fixes here and there musically, but I've got to do um, all the vocals, like 11 songs. Um, and we're he and I are both recovering from different things. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's it was so much fun getting getting to be back in the studio with him. And you know, we we sit in there and we talk about you know the old times and being in the studio with RCA and B and A uh, and just we just laugh a lot. You know, mm -hmm. laughter is really important in my life. And uh, Richard and I do a lot of laughing when we're in the studio, and and it makes just makes for better music and he's just he's just so talented he's a modern day mozart you know <laughs> no doubt hey take me back to that 92 uh greatest hits album uh, so many questions on there but i tell you the the one that sticks out <laughs> to me is one we, we kind of mentioned that earlier but uh what part of no take me through the backstory of that one fantastic songwriting Lori. fantastic lyrics fantastic storytelling my goodness what a what a major hit for you i was um uh... I was really apprehensive about putting that out um, because I didn't want I, I didn't want guys to think that, you know, I was being a, a biatch or something, you know, it, and 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 Richard assured me the way that we recorded it, it would not be it would be more, you know, fun, fun tongue in cheek. And I said, as long as I'm not, you know, looked at as the girl who hates guys, you know, mm -hmm. you know. I don't want to be that. So um, anyway, um, it came off great. It was one of the, it just goes to show, you know, I, there's a couple songs that I didn't want to record that were big records for me. And so mm -hmm. sometimes you just got to listen to the producer and why you, why you pick somebody who's great with music is because sometimes they know things and sometimes it's the opposite way, but you know, you got to listen to the people who know and, um, and pray, pray you made the right decision. You know, you've done a lot of great duets in your career, and I always like to, like to ask this, especially uh, someone as successful as you are. Uh, is there one or two that kind of stick out that you're just a man, man, this was a lifelong dream for me. This is one of my best duets ever. I'll always remember this. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I love everybody I've ever sang with. Um, pleased to be, ha had been on so many of their records. Um, 
I guess, you know, my greatest uh, achievement, my greatest thing that I still go, gosh, Laura, you recorded with Frank Sinatra? I mean, really? You recorded with Frank Sinatra? And it's <laughs> it's like I, I still, sometimes when the song starts, you know, it's, it's on uh, all my music shuffles through the house and stuff all the time. And I'm like, I recorded with Frank Sinatra. I mean, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. And I guess in second place would have to be the Beach Boys. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've loved them since I was a little girl. And mm -hmm. when they called and invited me to sing on their album, uh, Stars and Stripes, I thought it was a joke, really. Mm -hmm. I thought somebody was playing a joke on me. And um, they weren't. <laughs> and I... <laughs> <laughs> they asked me to sing one of their hit records, uh, Don't Worry Baby, with them. Mm -hmm. And I was just a wreck. I mean, I, I I kind of felt like a little kid, like getting ready to meet Cinderella or something, you know? <laughs> I mean, I was getting ready to meet and sing with Brian Wilson, all the Beach Boys, Mike Love, all, all of them. I was, I couldn't believe it. And it, it was just so exciting if, if anybody's ever seen the video. And if you haven't. Mm -hmm. You can find it on, on YouTube, um, Beach Boys and Lori Morgan and see the making of the, the, the song. And it, you can see, you can feel the excitement, even from Brian Wilson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can actually see a little <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> and um, so it, it, it was, um, those, those are the two. But, you know, I, Johnny Mathis, Andy Williams, uh, Dolly Parton, Tammy Wynette, George Jones. I mean, uh, you know, I've, I've been, I've been very lucky. I've gotten so much, uh, so many blessings in my career that I never dreamed mm -hmm. would happen to me, you know, never. I know. And one of those blessings I love, cause you guys sound so great. And I love this album. It was Pam Tillis and y'all put out the 2017 record, come see me and come lonely. And I thought that was some of the best, uh, country music that I'd ever heard. Uh, what was it like to work with Pam on that project? Hopefully she's still there. Still got, can you still hear me? Uh oh, we got a little technical issue going on here. Again, Lori Morgan here on the backstage pass. We'll try to get her back here on the show, just telling some great stories here. But again, folks, you can catch her next week on Friday, November the 11th at LaBerge Casino and Hotel in Baton Rouge, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So definitely we'll uh, try to get her back there. Tickets are on the website, Lori.com. Make sure you guys go visit that. She's a little frozen there in uh, Mississippi, her location. Uh, right now, too. She just got there to do some shows coming up again, November 11th in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, LaBerge Casino Hotel in Baton Rouge, and then in Hinton, Oklahoma, Saturday, November 12th, Sugar Creek Casino, and then, of course, uh, in Clearwater, Florida, coming up on Sunday, November 20th, the Billheimer Capitol Theater, and then Monday, November 21st, Calusa uh, Sound Convention Center and Amphitheater in Fort Myers, Florida. So for all those tour dates, you can go to Lori.com. And make sure you guys get uh, your tickets there, too, as well. So definitely, um, we'll try to get her back and reestablish that connection with Lori here. Lori Morgan, the great Lori Morgan here on the Backstage Pass, again, powered by the uh, Sports Guys uh, podcast.com. And, of course, you can check out our interviews there. Uh, all the interviews, if you ever miss anything, on that very website, of course, on the YouTube channel. Make sure you guys go subscribe. Um, like I said, and Nancy, reading some of the comments, we'll try to reestablish the connection uh, with Lori here a little bit. Um not sure if she's going to do the West, uh, Southwest. Like I said, check out the website um, and kind of see what's there. And uh, definitely we'll try to get her back here on the show um, here just a little bit. Um, here just a little bit. We'll take a quick timeout. We've got to get a word in for our sponsors. We'll do that here on the backstage pass. A word from Banktail Whiskey. Try to reestablish Lori and a little bit. Get Lori Morgan back here on the show. Stay tuned for a little bit more. The Banktail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Hello. Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host, Kirsty Kraus, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome into the Hello. Backstage Pass... And back here Hello. with Lori Morgan, reestablish that connection here live on the show here too. That just it froze up, and it's all good. That's you know what happened? happened? What's I that? I was sitting out. I was sitting outside, and it the temperature got the phone. The sun beating down on the phone made it. I went no, so I ran in the house. <laughs> it's all good. We'll pick up. I know our last talking point. That's the good thing about live radio sometimes and live podcasting. You have breaks to back you up, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was just uh, talking about some of your shows on your website. Again, for all that, people were commenting in the box. Next week, Friday, November 11th, uh, in uh, La Berge Casino and Hotel over there in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, November 11th. And for more, Baton Rouge. check out Lori.com. Hey, we're talking about the album with, with Pam Tillis a little bit. Uh, come see me and come lonely. Uh, you guys I mean, knocked it out of the park, no doubt, to use that sports expression. But it, uh, some of the best country music you ever could hear when that came out in 2017, it had to be a lot of fun working with one of your best friends in the business. Well, it still is. We're, we've, we've been working together on the road now for uh, 11 years. We've been doing the Grits and Glamour Tour. And uh, we've this is our second album together, Come See Me and Come Lonely. And I guess that's where I got uh, cut off a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. Um we we wanted some of the younger crowd that comes to our show to hear um, and and know where we got our love for for country music from some of these great songs that we recorded by some of our favorite artists, you know, like KT Oslin and mm -hmm. Dottie West and uh, oh, the Everly Brothers. I mean, just you know, some young people don't even know who these people are and. Um, we just had a blast and, and, and recording it with Richard. Uh, he'd always wanted to work with Pam and she'd always wanted to work with him. And uh, it was fun. It was, uh, it's definitely yeah. fun. And we still, we do um, songs on our show, on our live show. Um, we do one from those Divas album and then one from the come see me and come lonely album. I love that single you guys put out this past uh, June, which was uh, fantastic. Just a great, another great song. Just, I mean, again, you, you always put out great songs. A Picture of Me Without You, uh, it's on uh, out there nationwide for, for folks to go check out. Uh, this one just really sent a, a great message. And again, the lyrics were, for me, kind of, you know, hit head on right there too. Just a great song. And this had to be a lot of fun to work on too, right? Now, are you talking about my my old record of Picture Me Without You? I, I think that's what I'm yeah, referring to. I guess it just came up on iTunes as 2022, and it had a single there. And it was talking about, but yes, A Picture of Me Without You, which is... Yeah, that's I, I recorded that with Richard Landis uh, years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, still do it live on my show. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I, I recorded that because I got to work, you know, I was very blessed and got to work with George Jones. Uh, I was in his band for... A few years. Mm -hmm. I was one of the Jones boys. So um, when I left his show, I recorded one of his big records, which was Picture Me Without You. Mm -hmm. And we still do it live on the shows. Yeah, I just I guess iTunes had it as the 2022 uh, version there they put out. And I listened to a lot of the iTunes music out there. So when I got it back in June, y'all Yeah, there's the probably a lot of live versions <laughs> which is, of it. Yeah, that was actually a live version for it. They, they called it uh, pic a Picture of Me without you and they put like a little <laughs> kick it kicking back and it said single on it right there too from the <laughs> itunes thing there uh let me ask you about this you know uh, so much is going on like you said so many projects we talked about the book and, and things out there too uh but i know you're you're co-writing the album uh one of our favorites here on the show i love the gatlin brothers i've had larry on uh, before uh co-writing an album with larry gatlin uh, does it get any better you mentioned the beach boys i guess the <laughs> gatlin's <laughs> legendary in country well, music I haven't had a chance to record with them yet, mm -hmm. but I did start writing a new project with Larry mm -hmm. and we started it on last year when out on the country music cruise. And we just had this really awesome idea. Um, I'm just going to give a hint and I'm just going to say the word Mickey Newberry um, for anybody out there who likes Mickey Newberry uh, albums and songs, we're 
we're kind of um, stealing a little idea from Mickey and doing um, an album that's about women. Mm -hmm. um, and Larry is just a genius. I mean, he, the first time I sat down to write with him, I just, I was just staring at him like I'm an idiot, you know, and <laughs> he, everything he'd write down, it was just, it was, it was like watching a wizard at work, just crazy, like, you know, and then all of a sudden he'd slow down and play this gorgeous melody and this, and, and I was just in awe. And I said, Larry, we got to write. He said, the hell with right. Let's do a whole project together, you know, and so, um, we're we're working on that now. We've all, we've already got five songs written, mm -hmm. um, and it'll probably be next summer before that yes. project comes out. Hey, tell me about this one because uh, again, one of your uh, most top listened to out there streamed uh, something in red. Always loved that one just because it was so beautiful. Your your vocals again spot on with it too, and the writing. I connect with lyrics so much in songs these days and really kind of just resonate with them. And so many fans love that song, but something in red holds a special place. I'm sure in your heart too. Oh yes, it does. Actually, when they pitched me that song, um, the song was actually written by Angela Cassett. And um, first time that song was pitched to me is when uh, Barry Beckett was still alive, who was my first producer on mm -hmm. uh, RCA. And, uh, I've got halfway through it. I said, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like the song. Turn. I don't want to hear it. Just listen. I don't want to hear it. I don't like it. <laughs> so um, after Barry did my first album, uh, they got Richard Landis in to do my second album. And guess what the first song he pitched me was? <laughs> Something in Red. Something in Red. Look, I've already told everybody, I don't like this song. I'm not doing this song. Mm-hmm. So he begged and Joe Galani begged and they begged. And I, at that time I had my best girlfriend out on the road with me and uh, she was my assistant and they begged her to get me locked in a room and make me listen to that song. <laughs> and so I went in to take a bubble bath and all of a sudden the door, uh, a boom box came around and sat on the floor and some, she pushed play and locked. The, didn't lock it, but shut the bathroom door so I couldn't get out of the tub. And I had to sit in the tub and listen to something in red all the way through. And when it got right at the blue verse, um, I was in tears. Mm -hmm. And I had thought that they were going to make it, that the, it, the song was going to end in black and we were going to play off death and, mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. And I, I thought, mm -mm, I'm not doing this. But when it got past it and it went to just a size larger, I mean, I related to that so much. And we called the label and said, OK, put it on hold. We're going to do it. So it is a very special song. And even though mm -hmm. it didn't go number one, it still sold more albums for me than any other mm -hmm. record I'd ever recorded. Uh, you know, amazing. I'm glad you told that story. It's one of the, the best songs ever written, and, and definitely you put your vocals too. Hey, I know next week coming up, I believe, is the Academy of Country Music Awards, uh, which is taking place right there. I believe it's Bridgestone Arena in, in Nashville. Uh, you're a four time winner yourself. Uh, you know, and I always tell people, you know, the, the awards and recognitions never come easy in this business. You, you mentioned how hard this is, but, you know, you're a Grammy winner yourself. Uh, just getting that type of recognition from peers and publications and broadcast and things like that. I'm sure it never gets old. And those are memories that you'll cherish forever, right? Oh, of course. Uh, you know, I've got all my awards sitting uh, in a perfect place in, in my house where Keith's awards are and a lot of Keith memorabilia. And and um, every one of those awards mean everything to me. Everything I've worked hard, hard for years. 40, I've been on the road almost 48 years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'm very proud of those awards and um, I know what it's like to get out there and work for them. So, you know, the people who are getting them, um, I feel are, are probably very, very deserving of them. It's big nights for those people. Yeah. And it's a huge categories there that people are up for nominations. I think like it's one thing to be just to be nominated to, to win it is, is kind of the extra icing on the cake, but just to be nominated in those categories is very oh, special yeah. for those artists. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, you know, I, I, 
I sit now and I watch what they wear. That's what I'm I'm on. <laughs> what she got on? What she got on? You know? <laughs> My mom used when she was alive, she'd say, "Let's watch what they're gonna wear tonight." On you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> The major award shows, no doubt. <laughs> uh, let me have a little fun, and we'll do a little rapid fire with you. So these are just little funny questions we get to ask as we close the show, but I get to know you more, kind of that personal basis. All right, I'm going to lead off with this. Uh, when it comes to food and, and kind of a beverage, what what is a, uh, a Lori Morgan kind of favorite cuisine, uh, food-wise or, or, or drink-wise? Spicy Nashville hot chicken. Ooh, okay. And Patron, Silver Patron, <laughs> I love it. I'm going to stay with the food category, especially the Patron thing. Uh, pizza out there. What toppings go on the, the Lori Morgan favorite pie? I'm a veggie pie. Okay. I like all vegetables, um, all kind of vegetables on my pizza and okay. lots of cheese. Lots of cheese. I'll tell you what I tried for the first time a few weeks ago after knocking it. And I say, don't knock it till you try it. But uh, the Hawaiian pizza with pineapple and Canadian. Yeah, bacon, that's was, good. I love I was, it. I was uh, pretty pretty impressed with that, too. All right, let me ask you this. This may, may take some thought. It may not. Uh, when it comes to the, the title of the first song that you ever wrote, uh, do you remember the title? Or if you don't remember the title, what was the, the song about? <laughs> it was um, – <laughs> the title of the song was called Country Scene. Okay. And um, it was a one-line song that I wrote um, – terrible song i never even tried to work on it i was about 10 years old and i just thought i'd i, I thought i'd landed the jackpot you know and i took it up to my dad and i sang him a line to it and he's like yeah, yeah work on it a little bit you know and i'm like i'll never say it again because i thought he was going to say oh that's a hit you know mm -hmm. but uh yeah i remember the name of it country scene terrible terrible sure. song <laughs> well i say you're saying you're very young, and you remember that's amazing. You can remember that, no doubt. All right, take me back again. Nineties country. I, I have always said on this show, and even when I was DJing back years ago, there will never be another era like that again. I know it's starting to make, as I said, kind of early in the show, a little bit of a comeback for certain different artists that fit that genre, such as yourself in the traditional country sound. Do you think we'll ever see an era like that again? I pray we do. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it's going to be a while, but I do think it's going to have to get back to that because those are the story songs. There's the story songs of our lives. Mm -hmm. There are heartaches. There are drinking alone. There are the cheating songs that Loretta Lynn told me, don't, honey, don't you ever stop writing cheating songs. Everybody <laughs> loves a cheating song. And, and you know, hardly anybody does them anymore. Mm -hmm. And, it's time to get back to the reality of life, man. You know, um, a lot of lonely people out there. There's a lot of happy things going on too, but most of the time you're going to find somebody crying next to a jukebox and a George Jones song. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I got to see and lucky enough. I got to see George before he, uh, he passed there several years ago in one of the iconic uh, concerts I got to go to. All right. So speaking of this song, we'll go back to the greatest hits album. Take me through the making of except for Monday. Was that one of your favorite ones to record? Oddly enough, it was not. Okay. Um, it was after I recorded it. Um, but uh, the gentleman who wrote it was staying at Richard Landis's house. Mm -hmm. um, and Richard and I were in the middle of the making of, um something in red album and i think it was something in red album i don't know what album um and he comes home to this uh, his friend that's staying there he's a man he said we're in trouble i need an up-tempo song i need an up-tempo song bat a country up-tempo song and he just richard was beside himself he went to bed and got up the next morning to come to the studio and he said mike came out of the studio downstairs handed him cassette he said here i wrote this last night richard put it in the car and brought it to the studio and he said here's your hit mm -hmm. the guy wrote it in one night wow and just just happened it just, it just blinked. there you go 
One of those <laughs> freak things. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, let me ask you this. I know it's going to be fun again. Uh, Friday, November 11th, you guys can catch or get tickets now at Lori.com, LaBear's Casino and Hotel in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Hinton, Oklahoma, the Sugar Creek Casino, November 12th, and then November 20th at the Billheimer Capitol Theater in Clearwater, Florida. All these dates can be found at Lori.com uh, here. All right, so I want to ask you about this. When it comes to uh, favorite shows you like to binge watch, what does is, what is Lori Morgan get into? I'm I'm an ID girl. I love crime. Okay. I watch crime TV, uh, the ID channel, all the time. <laughs> and um, you know, and I and I've watched some of the, some series, you know, Downton Abbey and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But when I'm when I'm just flipping through or just bored, and we're riding a bus or I'm you know sitting on the couch, I'm I'm watching some kind of murder investigation. Um, I've always law and all that stuff has always interested me. And I've always kind of in the back of my head, you know, wished I could have been smart enough to be a prosecuting attorney. And um, so those shows really they grab my interest a lot. I, I have to be. Um, what's the word? I, I have to be. Um, help me think of the word. Just kind excited, of excited, uh, interested, basically, yeah. kind of in that, in the mood yeah, or something, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and um, you know, I, we watched the Outland, Outlander, and uh, so many of the great shows that have been on. Uh, my husband watched Yellowstone, all that mm -hmm. stuff. But when I'm caught by myself, I'm watching the ID Channel. I love that. That's good. I love, I'm love with you. I love crimes. I love investigations. I love oh, things me too. That, forensic that just, files. <laughs> forensic files. Yeah. Stuff like that too. All right. Kind of away from music. Are there any other hobbies that you still, you still enjoy to do? I love to swim. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a avid swimmer. I love swimming. And, um, a friend, uh, a friend of mine and myself, we met a couple years ago in Florida and, I found out she loves mermaids and I love mermaids. And so we bought all kinds of mermaid outfits and we would swim as mermaids all day long. And I was in the best shape I'd ever been in in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to get in good shape, buy you a mermaid suit and go <laughs> swim in it every day. And so we, we would spend literally when I was home every day in the pool, um, taking pictures and swimming and it was just it, i love love the water and um that's exactly why we're going to move back uh to the coast to the coast yeah nothing like the coast my wife loves the beaches and my little girl and, and definitely i know right there with you too well again catch her friday november 11th at laberge casino and hotel in baton rouge get your tickets now at Lori. Dot com. Lori, we appreciate the time. And as always, thanks for dropping by and talking some music and all the latest projects. Looking forward to hopefully catching up when uh, things are released in 2023. We appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. And y'all be watching for Jesse Whitley and Morgan Cheyenne. And, um, you know, like I told you, Jesse's a little outlaw. Morgan's just sweet little country girl singing country music. <laughs> Morgan Cheyenne, I'm going to have to get on this show. So definitely I'll put yeah, in a request. Yeah, yeah for her to highlight because i'm career. going to manage her so i'll yeah. make sure that happens <laughs> yeah please do again check out y'all make sure laurie.com and of course leave your comments in the comment box we'll get to as many as we can off the air hey best can of I luck answer with the... one comment i know somebody's going to say something about yeah go for it yeah i don't have a stitch of makeup on i don't wear makeup when i'm not on stage mm -hmm. so somebody i'm sure is going to say she looks terrible <laughs> Well, I know I do. So there well, you go. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but hopefully so people in the comment box, they keep their opinions right there too. If you have questions, <laughs> let us know. And then definitely uh, thanks to everybody out there for tuning in. We're back uh, this week or next week uh, for another show too. Lori, thanks so much. We'll see you guys on the backstage pass coming up here this week and next week. Uh, stay tuned for more and check out Lori.com. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.